Hey, what's up, everyone? It is me, Shemi Cash, doing another autobiographical show where I dump my brain out and process a few thoughts. So I'm out here in California in one of the houses that I grew up in. From time to time, or at least maybe once or twice a year, I go to see my folks. I'm fortunate enough to have both of my parents alive, so I do what I can to see them and spend time with them while I can. You know, while we're still walking the earth and while I'm still here too. I don't take my folks for granted. You guys shouldn't take your family for granted too if they are around. As toxic and as crazy and as upside down as they may be, they did give you the gift of life and whatnot. So I do respect them and do my best to so-called honor them and at least show my presence and do what I can for them a couple times a year, right? This might be something as simple as just going to maintain their car, clean the house, do some stuff, reach a few things, maintain or repair a few things to do what I can for people, right? And, you know, this is just voluntary or whatever, but if I happen to get a cheap flight or whatever, I'll go ahead and see my folks, right? I do realize a lot of you guys come from dysfunctional families. I come from a highly dysfunctional family, and they actually say that most people's families are dysfunctional anyway, but I just admit to it or whatever, right? I don't think it gets more upside down than this, right? As you guys know, I'm the internet pornographer, Shimmy Cash. I make movies. I have thousands of movies out there, websites, this and that. And most people probably would not be proud to have their son grow up to be a pornographer, porn star, whatever like that. But that is only one of the small facets of my life that people choose to focus on. As you guys have seen in this channel, if you look at some of the previous episodes, I was a janitor at a gym for a couple of months. I've been a security guard, truck driver accountant, you name it. I've done like a hundred jobs, this and that, but you guys tend to only focus on uh, the movie career that I try to actually push in front of everyone because that's really my job or whatever. So people only know me as Shimmy Cash, not Shimmy McBeb, the, the mop pushing, broom pushing, Uber driver, whatever, whatever. And that's cool with me too. Some of you guys may just know me as the 5k, 10k runner that does a blog. And I guess I'm a different person to a lot of different people, you know, it's all good in the hood. Doesn't matter to me. I'm the same nigga. Doesn't matter what continent I happen to uh, plant my feet on or whatever, right? So anyway, I'm out here in California. Uh, I have been looking at the news while I'm down in Miami, and I see all this news in the California Bay Area I grew up in. Things look pretty rampant out here. People are ripping and running, breaking in cars, knocking old folks over. It looks pretty much like a lawless state here. I'm out here and gas on the corner is $6.50 a gallon. The streets are covered in trash. It looks like a wasteland. It actually looks like an old Sega Genesis video game where they were like projecting the future. Like if you guys have ever played Shinobi 3 Shadow Dancer or something where they show, you know, the futuristic America with broke down cars on the street and stuff like that, burning buildings. It kind of looks like that, right? Actually, the old Sega game Streets of Rage if you guys are old enough to remember that, is a pretty much accurate representation of the Oakland Bay Area that I'm in right now. Yeah, so it's become a real final fight type of game out there in the streets. So I do get a little concerned about my folks and my family in general. So just come in to touch base and see what's going on out here, right? So in the meantime, as the floor is drying, as I have just mopped the floor, I have a few times to reflect on a few things and also... I realized that um, it's actually good and healthy for you to visit your parents and other just people in general. A lot of times people are in isolation and you can see that their brain is drifting off on far out tangents and they're on some crazy shit. A lot of times people that are in this like shut in kind of lifestyle by not having social interaction with other people, just as simple as maybe going to the corner store, or having a gym membership or just getting out of the house once a day, for instance, it can actually do wonders for your mental health. And people that stay in the house for weeks and months on end, they end up going nuts, usually, especially if they don't have an outlet such as myself, a website, a blog, you know, I got fucking fans, only fans, all kind of motherfuckers are emailing me, writing me, contacting me, meeting up with me, doing shoots all kind of days. So I always have a very active uh, social life or something going on. There's always a race I'm signed up for going up to this and that. You know, I got my girlfriend, I got this, I got my little Thailand condos, I got, there's always a hundred motherfuckers messaging me here and there, left and right, and I always have somewhere to go, something to do and something to maintain, right? But I realized that not everybody has a website to run, not everyone has like a little fan club, not everyone works, not everyone works out, not everyone runs, not everyone rides a motorcycle. 
you know, not everyone tries to save the world as I am doing, quote unquote. And by save the world, I mean just I'm just doing my mama's laundry, washing their floor, you know, cleaning up their car, changing the oil, shit that they should have done themselves, but they neglect to. But it's almost like I feel like I'm more or less saving, not only saving them, but saving myself future work down the road. You know what I mean? I don't want to get a call that something's broke down on the car or something's broke down in the house due to their own ignorance or mismanagement or laziness, basically. So, you know, a lot of times people have shit and they're not prepared to maintain it and take care of it. And that's a crying shame. You know, like if you go and buy a racehorse, you got to feed the motherfucker and make him work out and, you know, exercise them and keep them healthy. You can't just you know, park it in a garage. It's a fucking racehorse, right? Some people don't understand that concept of uh, maintenance and this and that. Uh, a, a little side tangent. You guys might remember the white Ducati 848 Evo that I had a couple months ago or maybe about a year ago, maybe by now. Now nah, it's been less than a year. It was a huge money pit, very expensive. I've never had a motorcycle that cost me four or $500 every time I ride it. I've broken sprag clutches and all kinds of pretty much damn near everything on the bike and it still leaks oil. It still don't want to start. It's a piece of shit. And basically it's a rich white man's bike that I can't afford to ride. I can't afford to play that ball game. So I got my little white Honda CBR that I could beat the hell out of day in, day out. Right. So again, I've learned to not bite off more than I could chew. I do happen to have my old Porsches, but I maintain them myself and I hardly ever use them, you know, seldom drive them. So they're going to last forever. I'm basically out of the car game for the next decade, you know, with those cars or whatever. But yeah, man, um, <laughs> you got to have something to tinker with. You got to have something reliable, I should say. You should have a reliable toy to play with that doesn't deplete your pockets or cause you any pain or undue suffering. If you have anything like that in your life that's just being like a huge time, money, energy vampire to you, you got to get rid of it and trade it in for something else. That goes for people too. So you can't hold on to those kind of extreme liabilities that just weigh you down, right? It'll take a lesson, life lesson from my last few, maybe my last year or year and a half of shows where you guys saw I'm delivering Uber Eats, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Why? For the goddamn Ducati. <laughs> the piece of shit bike that I ended up selling or whatever, right? So it's often not necessary to put yourself through undue levels of hell just to have that one special toy, especially if that one toy doesn't actually make you that happy. You know, you're probably better off just getting another toy to play with or getting another hobby or interest entirely is what I found out, right? So anyway, that's that. So hold on, let me pause here for a break. Ah, okay, I'm back from that little break here. I, I know what I wanted to talk about, what the focus of this episode is too, as I'm hanging up this laundry on the clothesline here. Now, I went out to lunch with a friend in Vegas yesterday, and I, I actually talked to her about um, things I like and dislike and whatever. And I come to the realization and I told her, like, you know what? I think I actually hate men, like all men, period. You know, with the exception of my dad and my own kids, it's like I, I pretty much hate men and view men as pretty much the, uh, the competition, the enemy, the this and that. And that shouldn't come as a surprise to a lot of you guys. You know, I mean, a lot of times, like, one thing that I noticed, especially with me, me doing porn, you know, filming the girls and stuff and that you get I get a lot of a lot of emails from a lot of gay dudes. Right. Most people, most guys, most normal street guys would be like, oh, man, fucking faggot, leave me alone, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And I started reading more and more into this. And I'm like, man, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? What I was thinking at first. And a lot of times people are asking me, like, are you gay? Is he gay? Why does he do this? Why does he do that? This, 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 this. And I said to myself, not only am I not gay, I actually double hate all men, including lady boys and everything else, because pretty much I have a tro I have problems listening to men is what I've done in my whole analysis of my life or whatever. If you guys look at my whole workout routine, I do Chloe Ting's heat cardio workout. I've been doing it for about six or seven years, the same goddamn video every day because I like her voice. She's rather soft on the eyes, in good shape, looks like Chun-Li. Uh, speaking of Chun-Li, I always pick her in the game or whatever it is too. I always pick a girl character as well because I don't want to hear or even see another man. On my screen, in my ears, I have trouble taking direction from men. I don't like men. I hate men, period, basically, right? 
it's one of my uh, handicaps in life. And I realize I probably get that from my upbringing. My mom is a man hater, more or less, you know, including my dad. <laughs> most, most women hate their exes and whatever, et cetera. But um, I grew up in a house full of black women, mostly who are all single or divorced, and they all hate men, black men especially. So if you grow up in this type of environment for decades or whatever, at least the first you know quarter of your life or whatever, uh, a lot of that's going to trickle down and filter down to you by osmosis. You don't have any choice at all. It's whether you agree, disagree or whatever, the programming is still latent and it's there via osmosis. You're going to pick up on some of that, even if you reprogram your mind at a later date. Right. So I realize this now about myself. That's the reason I can't hold a job. I can't have a man supervisor. I can't have another man telling me what to do. I have extreme problems with all men, including Jesus fucking Christ, Muhammad, Gandhi, Buddha, any other deity or, you know, <laughs> fucking priest, pope. They're still a fucking man and I hate them all. You know, if God is a man, I hate him too. <laughs> this is an imaginary concept, I think, for many people. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like listening to men. I don't like hearing the bass in their voice. I definitely don't like looking at them. And yeah, that's just my world. And I think that's why I sell porn on the internet, because it's a job that involves me dealing with girls. I love girls. I'm a lover of women. I love the sound of their voice, the shape of their hips, the look that just, it relaxes me. Whereas the tone and even the presence, the smell, the sight of another man, I hate it with absolutely all my heart. It actually stresses me out, raises my blood pressure and puts me in like a combative, confrontational mood. Hold on, I got a phone call. I got to pause and take this right now. This is my girlfriend calling me. <laughs> got to talk to girls, takes the priority, see? All right, sound check one, two. God damn, there's a lot of background noise here. That's a garbage truck in the background. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Shimmy Show. I'm walking the block early here. It's in California. I haven't started the run yet. On our previous episode, <laughs> when I last left off this show, uh, my girlfriend called the other day and I took the call and, you know, I had to cook dinner and shit like that. And my day kind of went down a rabbit hole from there. But I want to uh, pick up where I left off that about my show about how I hate men and all that stuff, because I think that was a pretty interesting discussion I had with my folks last night, too. Yeah. <laughs> so if anything, by example, taking my own advice and listening to my own self-talk, if a girl calls me, my girlfriend calls whatever, well, pretty much if any girl calls me, right, it generally takes the priority over podcasting are talking to you guys a bunch of fucking dudes so that reiterates my point about how I'm more than willing to listen to girls than guys like probably 10 times as more willing yeah because I hate men so let's continue that topic right so <laughs> when I say that I hate men it's not that I can't stand their presence I, I can I can hang out with dudes as long as we're competing right if we're going to race if we're going to go work together, we're going to go fight, we're going to go beat each other senseless or something like that, I'm down. I'm down for competition and all that shit. But as far as just like leisurely hanging out, like, hey, bro, you want to go like hang out on the beach or that kind of shit? Fuck no. That's for me. That's for me and my girl, nigga. So <laughs> you guys are tripping if you think that I'm like just one of those hanging with the homies kind of guys. I'm, I'm not with that gang shit. I'm not with the homie shit. I'm not with any fraternity, brotherly love, any of that type of shit. Excuse me, sir, just crossing the street here. I'm hoping you guys can hear me over this background noise. God damn, California's noisy. Fuck, it's six in the morning at that. Jesus. So yeah, anyway, like, like I was saying, um, I have camaraderie with men in the workforce, in business, in competition, in, you know, in racing, anything where we're going head to head. You know, we can play video games together as long as it's a competitive game or something like that. But as far as like chilling out, hanging out, downtime, I am absolutely a thousand percent not interested 
and being at a sausage fest, hanging out with a bunch of fucking dudes, hanging on the corner, posted up against the fucking wall. Unless we're on a mission to go get some pussy or get some money, there's no point in us having any interaction or whatever together. But if we are agreed upon this common goal of pussy chasing, as most men are on throughout the course of their lives, chasing pussy, chasing money, then I think we can get along just fine, right? So all you guys who are members of my website and this and that, no, I don't hate you guys. For one, you're helping me make money. Two, you're helping me get pussy. We're best of best buddies, best of best friends. So like I say all the way, buy my movies, I want your money. <laughs> it's true, you know, that's how you can interact with me. But don't think you're gonna just fucking, you know, just randomly fucking email, DM, write me all kind of fucking shit and you haven't spent a goddamn dollar with me. You're tripping. <laughs> you gotta bring something to the table if you were born with fucking testicles, period. <laughs> okay, then we can be homies, then we can be friends and whatever because we're thinking along the same lines. And I really think if most dudes were really, really, really honest with themselves, they'd come to the same conclusion. You know, men beat the fuck up out of each other over mating rights, over, <laughs> I could show you guys hundreds if not thousands of emails of that, that's my girl, nigga. You know, niggers are willing to lose their life and bleed over that pussy sleeve, you know, which is very interesting to me. Like they're like in, like women are in short supply or something like that. But to prove my point though, it's like uh, most dudes, they got their brains twisted once they're thinking with their small head. I'm not saying that I'm any different, I'm just conscious of the fact and I just put it out there like that, right? Men are slaves to the pussy. But for biological reasons, that's what promotes and continues the propagation of humanity. I'm not interested in rewiring evolution. <laughs> and to think, to think contrary to that in this modern day and age is just weird to me. And I will say there's a lot of fucking weirdos that I'm going to piss all you guys off right now. If you're one of these people who have done one of these like uh, gender change reassignment surgeries or you, you're a man and want to be a woman, you're a woman and want to be a man, far more uncommon. Uh, and you've actually gone through the, the steps to physically mutilate yourself because it's like a trend or some shit. I think you're a fucking weirdo and you're only a couple steps away from like jumping off the roof of top of a building basically. In my personal opinion, I don't think it's a very good long-term investment or decision because the world in which you live in, unless you live in a whole society of people like that, is going to be contrary to your, to accepting you, you know? Most people are not going to accept the six and a half foot tall, 300 pound uh, man with a wig on masquerading as a woman and vice versa, you know? Uh, if you look at some of the news reports, <laughs> this is, this is, I'm laughing at it actually too now that I think about it, and you guys could say whatever, but um, there, there's been a lot of, uh, what are they called, the area, uh, fuck, or, uh, Orlando, Florida, where I used to live at, right? There's a whole stroll there called OBT, Orange Blossom Trail. Pretty much all the working girls used to stroll up and down the street, black hookers, white hooker, Spanish hooker, you know, it's the whole stroll from pretty much the black side of town towards the downtown all the way up to where the mall is about a I'd say it's about a 10 mile stretch where just uh, working girls hookers prostitutes walk up and down the street right interestingly enough as you get more towards the black areas there are trannies transsexual chicks with dicks guys with wigs on and you're always reading in the newspaper these guys are always getting fucked up dumped in dumpsters and shit like that most likely because they <laughs> once tricks find out they've been defrauded and they've basically picked up a lady boy most men can't stomach that they're gonna kill that nigga <laughs> you know instantly and for reasons that men have pride and honor and whatever and probably the most offensive thing that you could do to a straight guy is to accuse him of being a fag a gay or this or that you know a tranny lover or whatever you want to call it that is not cool to most guys and most guys are willing to die over their so-called honor or whatever like that right this is very common and i'll have to maybe post some news examples if you guys don't believe me but most guys don't like their uh psych 
they don't like their psyche being fucked with like that, right? This is probably a common thing around the world, right? The deception thing, that's like the ultimate deception for a man. And the reason it ends up like this is because, going back to what I said, men hate other men. Men hate the idea of even being in that, in that world due to pride and uh, just upbringing and uh, the, the training they've had since, since birth, basically. I'd actually argue it's somewhat biological or whatever in terms of uh, survival, you know. Two men butt-fucking each other is not going to propagate the human race. It's going to result in pretty much death of humanity and all other species. <laughs> and for those of you who say, eh, fuck you, shimmy, whatever, whatever, you're anti-gay, anti-this, maybe I am, fuck it. But I know one thing for sure, my parents ain't gay, my mom and dad ain't gay, and that's how I got here. And if your parents were gay, at least at the time of your... They weren't gay at the time of your conception. <laughs> I can fucking guarantee that. And all the previous generations before you. So, you know, put that in your pipe and smoke it, as they say. But yeah, that, that, that's just another side tangent of the, the man-hate thing or whatever. You know, people often say men have it hard, this, that, and the other. And I agree. The flip side that women will throw at the thing is, you know, it's a man's world and this and that. Men have more or less constructed the world. The sidewalk I'm walking on right now, the train track I just crossed, all this shit. I'm sure it's more than 90, if not 99% built and constructed by men. Men create, design, and engineer most of the things you touch, see, <laughs> walk on, and all that, right? So in that respect, it is a man's world. And the cards you play or the path you choose to take, you know, it is what it is. If, you were, if you're a girl listening to this, not too many girls that listen to this show anymore, but you were born with a different set of resources. <laughs> you have a cookie jar between your legs. You have leverage over most men alive, whether you realize it or not. And you're, it's up to you if you choose to play the life the game of life dif differently, right? You guys probably know that if you don't, I'll tell you. If you go and x ray a man and a woman of almost the same size, you'll find Wait. that. Oh, holy shit, the crosswalk's talking, California. Wait. I push the button that says wait. 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 <laughs> what a weird city. Yeah, man. Uh, anyway, uh, men have larger lung capacity. Men have. Uh, we're just, our circulation, circulatory system is wired a lot differently than women. I could get into this, into the biology of it or whatever, but for the podcast of a pornographer, I'm not going to go that far. But realize there, there are internal biological differences, and most people don't realize this. It's not just about having tits and hair and a, and a hole between your legs, you know. There's far more to it, far more than that. The main, the main thing, too, also, as far as circulation goes, most men have, I should say all men, our circulation system is geared toward our, uh, our legs and arms, our extremities have... i got to cross the street. Hold on. One moment. Okay, safety across the street now. All right, so like I was saying, Women's circulatory system, for you guys who don't know, it's more core-centric, probably due to being able to childbirth, carry babies, this and that. Uh, blood flow internally is like more centralized to the core, you know, the abs, the core, the hips, all that stuff. Whereas men, we have more circulation in our arms and legs, therefore we lift more, run, jump, this and that. It comes to us much easier than it would for a woman. I'm not saying that women can't do this shit. They just are going to biologically struggle with these type of things harder because whatever. In terms of flexibility, you guys probably know that girls are far more flexible than guys. Uh, the more muscle you have, the less flexible you are. Part of the reason I do so many of these girl workouts that I've mentioned in the previous uh, couple minutes ago is because I want flexibility. I want to be lightweight. I'm not really interested in having a lot of muscles, especially I, I don't do weights at all. Uh, I have very small arms. I basically have almost a uh, Chun-Li type of woman frame because those are the workouts that I do. And I enjoy just being flexible, light, and fast. It is what it is, right? 
not everybody wants to be fucking Zangief or E Honda <laughs> for you Street Fighter people out there, right? I like being a fast little nigga. So life is all about leveraging whatever cards you were dealt and making the most out of it. But you can play the game however you want to be. You want to be a sumo wrestler? Go do it. You know, you want to be a ninja? You could also go ahead and do that too. It's totally up to how you choose to develop your training process and the skin, bones, and frame you were born into. All right? So, I'm really hoping you guys can hear this podcast with all this goddamn California traffic, man. It's 6 a.m. I can't believe there's this many cars on the road. It's dark as fuck. Let me go and take a side street here. Yeah, so you guys can hopefully hear me better. Just a moment. Let me pause it for a moment here again. All right, so there's a little bit less traffic on one of these side streets. Well, maybe not so much. So anyway, where I'm at right now, I'm actually walking past a, uh, what do they call this? A Catholic church or some kind of, uh, I believe they call them missions in California. The old Spanish Catholic colonizer things. These are like landmarks in California. For those of you that don't know, I'm native of uh, Oakland, California, San Leandro, all that Bay Area shit. And, you know, it's basically northern Mexico. You know, California is stolen Mexican land, stolen Indian land. So all these, like, settlement uh, churches and shit are still here from colonization periods. And they've turned them into little schools and churches and stuff like that. I'm in mostly a little Spanish neighborhood right now. Mexican neighborhood. So the church is, again, just walking past this uh, Christ on the cross thing or whatever. The world is centered around worshiping dead men in particular. And again, I'll reiterate, I'll reiterate, I'll double down and triple down what I said about men and how much I hate men. All figures, public, private, holy, unholy, including Jesus Christ, Mahatma Gandhi, Muhammad, Buddha, Allah, Anybody with testicles, I probably hate them. Even I haven't even met them. But I do know that they've gone through the same obstacles that I have been through, as, as does every man. It makes no sense at all for me to go ahead and somehow <laughs> worship somebody else that has balls just like me. In fact, that's actually one of the most gayest things I've ever heard of, actually. You know, you want to swear your life and allegiance to another human being that's mortal that has testicles their dick gets hard just like me they have the same desires as me and you want me to worship this person because you know they got a book or some shit or they (laughs) they've got some kind of calling from from up high (laughs) i'll even you know what actually i think i just one of these places i walked by was one of those uh what do they call those nun places uh convents yeah, those are common around here in the little Spanish missions or whatever, too, where there's nuns and uh, not popes. Uh, I guess they're called priests. What do they call those guys that do the uh, the guys that don't fuck chicks? The, uh, the, the fucking uh, the opposite of whatever a nun is. I think they're called priests. I don't know. There's one of those places here. And that's really one of the most bizarre concepts I've ever heard of. You're just like swearing off pussy for life? What? <laughs> Did your parents have that same concept in their head? (laughs) Lord have mercy. So, you know, to do this monk lifestyle of repressing your sexuality and desires, it's very interesting to me. Uh, Yeah, I I don't... I mean, I understand... Okay, look look at it like this. I could understand if your dick's broken and your dick don't get hard no more, but you're still... What is this? Oh. Oh, that's... (laughs) I don't know if you guys heard that. That's my walking pace while I'm talking. My little uh, pacer thing just went off. But yeah, that's my concept of uh, world religion and stuff like that. Like, what the fuck were you guys thinking? Unless you're... (laughs) There's no way in the fuck I would ever swear off having a sex life unless I'm fully fully fucking disabled dick don't get hard can't walk blind can't see can't smell can't hear 
yeah, at some point you become less than human and subhuman once you uh, repress your sexuality that deeply. That's far very unhealthy, and you're likely to lash out in very unhealthy methods and ways. And that's coming from Shemmy Cash, the porn star, yeah. So, how about that? I'll plug myself again. <laughs> I love advertising. Tatikos, Indian girls, white girl cops, white wives matter, Shemmy Cash. Just hit your Google button and search for them. That's me. Buy that shit, sign up for it. It's only two ninety five, nigga. Right? As a matter of fact, as I'm walking by this gas station on the corner, what is this, Valero? Premium gasoline, and this is like a discount fucking gas station like Dynaco. It's like $6.09 for premium at this gas station. Incredible. <laughs> you can't, so for less than the price of half a gallon of gas, you could join my website for a whole fucking month. Play my movies and see what the hell I'm talking about. How about that? For you guys that don't know, my 30-day trial is only $2.95. The best deal on the internet, no doubt. And my OnlyFans is only $3.50 for the first month. So, <laughs> give me an excuse, man. Half a gallon of gas won't even get you halfway around the corner these days. Unless you got a motorcycle. So, anyway, yeah, that's, that's me, man. Just talking shit here in the morning. About to start my run as soon as it gets a little bit brighter. Maybe another half hour or so. I'm still a little bit on the East Coast time. But um, yeah, that, that's pretty much what's going on, man. I'm looking forward to going back to Southeast Asia. You know, I, I actually enjoy having a semi-decent standard of living that I cannot currently, and probably in the future, cannot ever replicate or afford in the USA. You know, I like the condo life, the night market, the beach, the run. All that stuff will extend my lifespan by going out that way. I do apologize to those of you that I'm leaving behind in the States. I tend to do this frequently, but I'm going to start doing it a hell of a lot more because life here is getting to the point where it's so expensive, it depletes my resources to the point where if I stay here, I won't even be able to travel and go back to my own goddamn condos. So <laughs> at the rate the price of gasoline and food and stuff like that is increasing here, Shit, nigga, you need to practically, basically you need to, you need at least $100,000 US per year. That's not even for California, that's for like Florida or some other cheaper pockets of uh, the country. But yeah, six figures ain't enough. If you live in a world where $100,000 still has you scraping by, you're pretty fucked up. I don't earn anywhere near to that number, right? I just cut corners like a motherfucker, you know? I ride a cheap little shitty one-cylinder bike, I eat once a day, I work out, I try not to, you know, spend unnecessarily, I don't smoke, don't drink, don't have any, you know, monkeys on my back like that, you know, other, you know, the, the, little, the little bike takes maybe $7 a gas a week, that type of thing, but cutting corners is the only way that I make it, to not have to like slave myself away in a janitorial or driver or delivery kind of career, right? I'm going to go talk about something else, too. I never really talked about that janitor job I had, right? You guys who still, my channel is still even active at this point. There was, there was I uploaded some videos where I was a janitor for about four months at a gym down in Florida. I didn't particularly mind the job because it's basically, if you're a janitor, you put on your headphones, you mop the floor, clean the place, very little bit of oversight going on as long as you do what's on the checklist, right? So towards the end of this four months job, uh, I didn't have a supervisor for like the first couple months. They had to hire one or something like that. It's a very problematic location in a dirty old funky building, you know. I'd have to wake up two, three, two, three in the morning. My shift would start at four in the morning. I got to go kick bums out of the place. I, you know, there's people uh, in the parking lot camped out there stuff like that all kind of shit the job doesn't entail you know i'm just supposed to be a mop pusher but you end up being security front desk all kinds of other uh ancillary operations in order to keep the place running right so whatever you know i'm not complaining it's work there's a check it's helping knock down some bills well eventually they get a supervisor on board they get a couple of them on board 
and they're black guys southern black guys these uh uncle tom type of fellows and again going back to my hatred of men thing i have difficulty not only taking orders from men but when men try to flex their nuts and authority over me it usually ends very badly you know i i actually walked away from the job i think three days after my boss or supervisor manager guy tried me three days in a row you know there's there's uh in particular from what i can recall i used to mop the lot if you look at my video i'm like mopping the locker room power washing it and stuff like that I've done, I typically do this three or four times per day, cleaning the locker rooms, mopping them, all that shit every couple of hours. And the boss comes in there one day and he's like, this floor is disgusting. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, I did it three times. You know, it's a high traffic area. It's a bunch of thug niggers coming in through here, homeless people, motherfuckers shooting up in the parking lot, stuff like that. So I do what I can, nigger. You're only paying me $13 an hour, more or less, I'm thinking, not in so many words. But the nigger tried me a couple days in a row. There's two niggers and a Hawaiian faggot that worked at this place. And... And when I say faggot, I mean flaming homosexual faggot, which is fine. I hate all men just the same. But the niggers back me into their office, their manager office. I got two niggers and a fag backing me up into this uh, like broom closet size office giving me shit, right? And as soon as a nigger elevates their voice and turns up their bass the slightest decibel, I take great offense to that, right? Niggers don't know. They were like 15 seconds away from my Gillette coming out of my pocket. And believe I always have a Mach 3 in my fucking pocket if I'm in public, right? <laughs> Try me, nigga, and find out, right? So rather than <laughs> at the point where my blood's boiling, I got up and walked away and quit this job, saved the brother's life <laughs> and probably my own future and walked away because I don't really like confrontation. I'm not a fighter, right? I've done some basic ineffective training in uh, Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Aikido, things of that nature, but I'm actually don't built, I'm not built to have the frame of a fighter, right? Even though I've taken these like, uh, you know, martial arts shits or whatever. For those of you that don't know, I actually dislocated my left kneecap two times as a teenager <laughs> doing like my, uh, I believe it was my green belt test for Taekwondo doing some like spinning roundhouse kick or some shit like that, right? Lifelong injury while my knee clicks, right? So I'm not a fighter. If I do fight, I'm going to fight with my legs more or less, but I'm not like a, uh, I have small arms. I'm not going to punch anybody's lights out. I'm short. I'm five foot nine and I'm just not strong like that, right? So in general, my point is <laughs> I'm always lightly armed somewhat, right? Because niggers will try you if you're shorter, smaller, or whatever. In the game of life, no one, man or woman, who is smaller or shorter than you is ever going to challenge you. Your challenges in life are always going to come from someone that's bigger, taller, heavier, wants to throw their weight around like that, right? So smaller people who are listening to my show now, they can probably relate. If you're a girl, you can probably relate too. You know what it's like to be towered over or, uh, you know have a fucking guy or whatever throw their weight around like that right so i avoid confrontation i'm a runner not a fighter i walked away from the situation like many other situations so as not to hurt the motherfucker you know and things of that nature but yeah man just being tried like that it was very very uh, interesting so i quit the job on the spot it wasn't worth the money it wasn't worth the stress and the niggers tried me too hard, especially for that small amount of money. I was like, what? You're not going to disrespect me over no 13 goddamn dollars. <laughs> I probably... <laughs> I was Chevy Cash, motherfucker. Who are you? <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I bring that story up just again to reiterate that I do not do well, especially taking criticism and hell, especially from another man and a black man at that a fucking nigger you actually think i'm gonna take orders from who died and which cracker died and made this nigger the overseer is beyond me right i 
<laughs> I think I can speak for every black man listening to this show right now. You are not going to take orders from another nigger and you know it. You know it deep down in your heart, right? You know, I don't care if you're the fucking police, army, navy, air force, marines. If you got a black face, double fuck you, nigger, okay? It's like, you already know that we're in the same boat. So how dare, how double dare you flex your little black balls on me, right? This is the main reason most black men, you know, kill each other's in the streets over disrespect. Disrespect is a very big thing in the streets for black men. I think that, uh, <laughs> well, for most men in general, you know, but, you know, you, you see that people that have the least amount of power or authority in the world, the last thing they want to be double dealt with is a feeling of double powerlessness in their situation, you know. Imagine two slaves on a plantation, and uh, you're both still slaves, but one guy has like a boss position, he, you know, Cracker gave him a fucking cowboy hat or something and he thinks he's God, you know, that kind of shit I'm talking about, right? So you guys ought to know that I don't function well in the workforce, right? If you guys play back another one of my very, very old shows from Thailand, if it's still online on my YouTube, there's a show I did in my condo about why I quit the track team when I was in high school, right? It was because my coach, he wasn't a black guy, he was a white dude, but he disrespected me. The cracker disrespected me so hard that he wouldn't let me get a word out of my mouth. He talked over me, just like this nigger at the gym. You know, if, I, if, I, if you ask me a question and ask me, hey, what's going on, Jimmy? Well, this happened. Ah, ah, ah. Anytime <laughs> you were asking for the grim motherfucking reaper, if you cut me off mid-speech and you ask me to explain what happens, and you do it with a little tad bit of bass in your voice, nigga. <laughs> my hand is going in my pocket for something, right? So that's basically what happened to me during the track the track team in high school, right? The the coach was like, it was like I remember too, very specifically. It was like two days before the biggest track meet of the year. I think it was called the Bay Area Top Eight, right? I was seated to go into the 800 and the 1600 meters, the half mile and the mile, and I'm ready to go. I'm, you know, I'm amped up and all that shit. And the day before for training, I believe the coach said he wanted me to do interval training, which I hated and I still do. But he said this and I was like, nah, fuck that. It's the day before the race, I'm taking it easy. I'm gonna run in the mountains and the hills with the white girls, which is probably the real reason I'm on the fucking track and cross country team any goddamn way to go run with the girls. I'm gonna run around the track with you bunch of niggers like fucking rats on a hamster wheel. Fuck you, right? Especially, you're not paying me. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys don't realize that uh, all sports, all sports are voluntary, right? I'm not on the payroll. This isn't the NBA. You're not, this, this is like high school sports, right? So the coach, I come back from running like seven miles in the hills coach was like where were you what happened what this and as soon as I said well I, I was about to go I was running the hill <laughs> he cuts me off mid-speech and he, he does that shit like I mentioned ah, ah, ah. you know mid-speech cuts me off and I was like oh my mouth is like wide open I immediately went to the locker room I grabbed the Safeway grocery bag I put in my track, <laughs> my whole everything, uniform, sweats, all the thing the crackers gave me, except for my fucking sneakers. And I handed it to him and I told him I quit. And then the cracker says, why? And I told him, I actually can't believe that he had the audacity to ask me why in front of the whole uh, team. And I said, because I choose to. And I walked away. Now I could have cussed him out and called him a cracker ass, cracker, pecker, wood, motherfucker, this, that, but I didn't. Kept my composure, walked away, and was like, fuck that nigger. i tell him, but this is voluntary. I'm on this team because I want to be on the team. I run because I want to run. I compete because I want to compete. And, you know, if you tell me contrary to that, and I'm not on the payroll, then fuck you. Shit. Find some other nigger to pass that baton. It ain't going to be me. I'm not bowing down to your cracker ass. Fuck you. You know, you guys are tripping. So... Just, I just throw that example out there so I don't want you guys to think that this is like a black-white thing, right? It's a man thing. I don't like taking orders from 
men. And I won't. That's why I work for myself. That's why I do what I do. So I think that so long as I have a money-making occupation where I deal with girls or machines or robots, you know, <laughs> then I'm okay. I'm okay. But as far as like taking direct orders from another dude, fuck that. So I hope that this has been a great example in this show and explaining my own psyche. And I hope that a lot of you folks listening can self-reflect and really, really, really be honest with yourself, right? The worst thing that you can do is lie to yourself in life. Don't self-delude yourself. It is a path to misery, okay? If you hate men, admit you hate men. If you hate women, admit you hate women. You don't have to like everything. You don't have to love everything. You ain't gotta love everybody. All you have to do is transverse through life and not step on other people's toes as little as possible. You know, don't make anybody's life more difficult than necessary is all that I could say to you. You know, if you can live your life that way, it's a good, clean life, clean living. You ain't gotta rip nobody off, take no shorts, fuck anybody over, make your little bread quietly, go in your corner and leave, you know, go buy a fucking motorcycle and enjoy your life is what I say to people, really. Because the world is set up or designed for conflict. It's really what more or less uh, keeps a lot of the systems going. People not realizing how things actually are. So many people are just, in my own family especially, blindly worshiping, spending hours, a third, a half, if not more of their day, you know, <laughs> worshiping a dead motherfucker, another man. You ain't never met imaginary beings. How are you going to spend all your years and decades of your life doing this is beyond me. If you would only focus that same energy on your own health and happiness and things of that nature, I think a lot of people would be a lot more happier. You know, some people, I, I argue they might need religion or some other control mechanism to help them be normal. But I'm not one of those people, <laughs> basically. So to each their own, you know, again... Uh, I'm not personally shitting on anyone's religions or life choices. I'm just telling and explaining my own to people. And maybe by that accord, you can understand why I do what I do, why I make my movies, why I like girls, why I hate men, and why I do this podcast, and why I'm about to start running now. So until next time, I hear the birds chirping. That means the sun is up. I'm about to go and run seven miles here. You guys have a great day, okay? In whatever part of the world you're at, y'all do what you're going to do. People are going to do what they do anyway, but I enjoy uh, talking about uh, stuff like this when I do have the time. I'll probably do some more shows should this show come out well. I don't know if the audio come out okay on this Bluetooth or whatever, but if it did, maybe I'll do more or whatever. So with that said, you know, fuck, if you like my shit, sign up for it. If you're a man, I hate you, remember, <laughs> but you spend money with me or we're on a mission to do some shit together to uh, get some money or get some pussy or whatever, and then we're best of friends or whatever. So look me up, Shimmy Cash. Again, my sites are Indian Girls, Tatikos, White Girl Cops, White Wives Matter, and probably many more to come. But that's how I navigate through the world. So look at my... Uh, I don't know of how many movies I fucking got. I think it's like 15, 1600 or something like that by now. But tons of movies is littered all over the fucking internet. I'm sure you'll find find one and find another and find another. So there you have it. Shimmy Cash is the name. And yeah, pussy is my game. Porn is my game. Look up my movies. Buy my movies. I want to 